In this video on geometric sequences, we learn about a must-know skill when learning about this topic. And that's illustrated in the exercise we have here. We're told a geometric sequence has first term 3 and common ratio 1.2. And we need to find the first term in this geometric progression that's greater than 18,000. Knowing how to find which term is the first to exceed a given value, in this case 18,000, is a very important skill to have when working about geometric sequences. So let's see how this is done. I'll just write SOL here for solution. And here's the idea. First of all, let's make a note of the first term. So first term was three, as well as the common ratio, which is 1.2. And in fact, I'll already write that. The first term, which would be U sub one, or simply U one, which equals to three. And the common ratio R is equal to 1.2. Now, since we know that we're dealing with a geometric sequence, we know that the formula for the nth term of this sequence is given by u sub n, which equals to the first term, u1, times the common ratio r, which is raised to the power of n minus 1. And in fact, I'll box that. That's the formula for the nth term of our geometric sequence. Now, copying this formula but replacing u1 by 3 and r by 1.2, we obtain the formula for the nth term of the sequence we're working with here. So that would be u sub n, which equals to 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus 1. Okay, remember, we need to find the first term in this geometric progression that's greater than 18,000. Another way of saying that is that we need to find the value of n inside our formula here, for which 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus 1 is greater than 18,000. In other words, we need to solve, and in fact, I'll write this, need to solve two dots, u sub n greater than 18,000. And now replacing the left-hand side of this inequality by three times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus one leads to what we'll actually solve. That's three times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus one greater than 18,000. Solving this inequality will lead to the value of n for which this inequality is true. And since n tells us the term we're dealing with, solving this inequality will allow us to find the first term which is greater than 18,000. So let's go ahead and solve this. In fact, I'll box this. This is the inequality we're going to be solving. And there are several ways of solving this, but I'll show you two options here. The first one, in fact, I'll write this, option one, this first option involves logarithms, and I'll just write logs. Now, if you have no idea of what logarithms are yet, don't worry. You can skip right ahead to option two, in which I show you how to solve this inequality using your calculator. If you have studied logarithms, though, I would say you need to know this method as well. So let's go ahead and solve this. We need to solve three times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus one, which is greater than 18,000. And to solve this, the first thing I need to do is isolate this exponential term, this 1.2 raised to the power of n minus 1. For that, I'll divide both sides of this inequality by this 3 that's multiplying the left-hand side. And in fact, maybe I'll write divide by 3 on both sides of the inequality. There we go. Dividing the left-hand side by 3, we're left with 1.2 raised to the power of n minus 1. And that's greater than the right-hand side, which becomes 18,000 divided by 3 which is 6,000. Now the trick is we need to get this n minus one away from this exponent. And for that, we apply logarithms to both sides of this inequality so that we can write log of 1.2 raised to the power of n minus one is greater than log of 6,000. And as I'm sure you already know, if I don't write the base on the logarithm, it means I'm working in base 10. I carry on and I use my knowledge of the laws of logarithms to take this n minus one outside of this logarithm. And in fact, I'll remind you of that law in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Given a logarithm of any base, and I'll say base b, log base b of a raised to the power of x is equal to x times log base b of a. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. There we go. What this result shows us is that the power on the number inside the logarithm, in the formula it's x, can be taken out of the logarithm and placed as a factor to it instead. So for our 1.2 raised to the power of n minus one here, 
we'll have n minus 1 times log of 1.2, and that's greater than log of 6,000. Next, I divide both sides by log of 1.2, and I'll write that underneath here. I divide the left-hand side by log of 1.2, and I divide the right-hand side by log of 1.2 as well. And now, carrying on with my working over here, on the left-hand side, I'll be left with n minus 1, so that's n minus 1, which is greater than log of 6,000 divided by log of 1.2. Finally, adding 1 to both sides of this inequality leads to n must be greater than log of 6,000 divided by log of 1.2 plus 1. And that's this inequality solved. Now, of course, to evaluate all of this, we need to turn over to our calculator. And you can see mine on the screen here. This is my TI Inspire CX. And so I'll go ahead and type all of this to evaluate it. So that's log of 6,000 divided by log of 1.2, and I add 1 to all of that. I check what I just typed, everything looks good, so I click on Enter. And we're done. Rounding what I see on my calculator screen to three significant figures, we can see that n must be greater than 48.7. And to state our final answer, we remember that n needs to be a whole number. Indeed, n tells us which term we're dealing with. So the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc., etc. And the first whole number that's greater than 48.7, I say greater than because n has to be greater than 48.7, would be 49. And so for the terms of the sequence to be greater than 18,000, n needs to be greater than or equal to 49. And in fact, I'll underline that result. Finally, using our calculator, we calculate the 49th term. So u sub 49, which will equal to 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of 49 minus 1. And doing that on my calculator here, that's 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of 49 minus 1. I'm happy with all of that, and I click on Enter. And there we go. We can clearly see that the 49th term is greater than 18,000, and it's equal to 18,959.2. And that's the answer. Now, if you want, you could also calculate the 48th term, u sub 48. And if you do, you'll see that it's equal to 15,799.4. And doing that is quite reassuring because it shows us that the 49th term is indeed the first one which is greater than 18,000. All that being said, that's option one taken care of. Remember, that's the option in which we use logarithms. As we're about to see though, option two goes quite a lot faster. And so I'll write that on the screen here, option two, and I'll say in parentheses using calculator, or I'll just write calculator. There we go, and I'll underline that of course, option two. Now here's the idea. Since we need to solve this inequality, and in fact I'll copy that again, we need to solve 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of n minus 1, which is greater than 18,000. To solve this inequality with our calculator, we'll follow two steps. The first step, I'll say step 1, is going to be to plot the left-hand side of this inequality. But rather than using the integer variable n, on our graphical calculator we'll just be using x. In other words, the first thing we'll do here is we'll plot y equals to 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of x minus 1. And so going back to my calculator here, which you can see on the screen again, I'm on this calculator's scratch pad, and so I'll toggle over to the graph section. And I do so here, I click on the graph, there we go. And now to plot this curve, 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of x minus 1, I go ahead and type that, that's 3 times 1.2 raised to the power of x minus 1. And I click on Enter. OK, the curve is now plotted, and that's step 1 done. So I move on to step 2. And in step 2, I'm going to use a table of values, which is given to me by the calculator, to find, without a single calculation, the first term which is greater than 18,000. And so I'll write use table of values, use table 
of values to find the value of n, the value of n, so that's the value of n which is solution to this inequality, and the actual term, and I'll just say and the term. And when I say and the term, I'm referring to the value of the first term, which is greater than 18,000. So here we go. Again, I'm using my TI Inspire CX here, but regardless of the calculator you're using, the method will be similar. Now for this calculator to see the table of values, I go ahead and click on menu, followed by the seventh option table, and followed by split screen table. There we go. Now in the first column of this table, which is in a slightly darker gray, those are the values of X, and in the second column, the lighter gray one, those are the output values of our function. So in this case, the second column shows us all the values of our sequence. So the first term would be three, the second term would be 3.6, the third term when x equals to three would be 4.32, and so on and so forth. And so to find the first term which is greater than 18,000, all I need to do here is scroll down until I reach a term greater than 18,000. So let's go. And I scroll down, I scroll down, Scrolling down, you can see that the terms are starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I keep on going, I'm at 9,000, a little under 11,000, 13, 15, and there we go. We can see that by the time we reach x equals to 49, in other words, when n equals to 49, our sequence, or the term, is equal to 18,959.2, which is exactly what we found with logarithms earlier on. Notice as well that we can see that the 48th term, when x equals to 48, so when n equals to 48, is 15,799.4, which further confirms that the 49th term is the first one to exceed 18,000. And there we go. And so on our exam paper, we could simply write using GDC for graphical display calculator, we can see that the 48th term, u sub 48, is equal to 15,799.4, and the 49th term, u sub 49, is equal to 18,959.2. And that's the answer. Now, looking at how we obtain the answer with our calculator, one may be tempted to say that this is a much better and faster method. But I do know that some students out there end up being very comfortable with logarithms. And for those students, this first option tends to be the better one. In any case, whichever option you choose, know that both of these options would be valid in an exam room. That being said, we now know how to find the first term in a geometric progression that's greater than some given value, in this case, 18,000. And that's it for this tutorial.